Hello, welcome back to Blue Harvest Toys. And this is another video remembering collectibles that found fame through the silver screen. And this time we're looking at Man From Uncle. At the height of the Cold War, spies were absolutely everywhere. That chap at your newsagent who spent too long perusing the crisps, spy. The old lady with the Yorkshire Terrier who sat on the same bench every day in the park, spy. Your local milkman, spy. Basically anyone and everyone was a potential spy in the 1960s. This paranoia resulted in plenty of spy related books, films and television programs. One of the most famous shows of the era was The Man From UNCLE, starring as super agents Napoleon Solo, played by Robert Vaughan, and Ilya Kuryakin, David McCallum. The show centred around the exploits of UNCLE, United Network Command for Law and Enforcement, an organisation consisting of agents of all nationalities. It's involved in mainstream political and legal order anywhere in the world. At least that was according to the early opening sequences of the television show. Uncle's chief adversary was the shadowy organisation called Thrush, which means technological hierarchy for the removal of undesirables and the subjugation of humanity, according to the Man From Uncle novels by David McDaniel. Many will note the similarities between Thrush and the infamous Spectre, Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge and Extortion from the James Bond novels. In fact, this might have been more than a coincidence because the concept of the Man From Uncle was originally conceived by Ian Fleming, the brains behind the Blow 7. You see, Fleming contributed to the show's original concept by being approached by the co-creator Norman Felton, a British-born American television producer for NBC. Fleming proposed the character of Napoleon Solo and originally the show was going to be called Fleming's Solo. However, the Bond producer Harry Saltzman and Albert R. Broccoli weren't too keen on Fleming's name being used in the title, so it was changed to just Solo. But even this proved too close for the 007 team because a sporting character called Mr Solo was set to appear in Goldfinger and they assisted the show's name was changed entirely. What's more, David McCallum's portrayal of the Russian agent called Ila Kiryakin proved popular with audiences so rather than just being focused on the exploits of Solo the duo were permanently teamed up together. Originally broadcast in black and white, The Man From UNCLE began broadcasting on the 26th of September 1964. In the first season, the show combined the drama of spy adventures with moments of levity, although as the show continued, more slapstick tone began to creep into the series, inspired partly by the success of the live-action Batman in 1966. The change in tone received a negative response from viewers and despite being renewed for a fourth season, it was cancelled halfway through in January 1968. During the course of the three year run, the Man From Uncle inspired numerous toys from cars to guns and lots more in between. One of the best and certainly the most famous in the Corgi's versions of a Man From Uncle car, known as the Thrustbuster. Although fans of the show will know it didn't look much like the short-lived Uncle Car, which appeared in the third and fourth seasons of the series. The TV version of a modified Piranha Coupe, a plastic-bodied concept car based on the Chevrolet Corvair chassis, while Corgi's take was based on the previously released Oldsmobile number 235. Originally released in 1966, the Thrustbuster included a gunner firing function and when a button was pressed on the roof of the car, it made a noise like a gun was being shot. Meanwhile, behind the wheel were figures of Solo and Kuryakin, with Solo leaning out the window with his gun drawn. Dramatic stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. However, perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of the Thrustbuster was a lack of consistency with colouring. The box shows an orange Oldsmobile, while the actual toy came in either white or metallic purple. Perhaps a mix-up of the paint factory. In terms of value, the white edition tends to be worth more, with a top price of around £500, while its purple sibling clocks in around £200. With G.I. Joe action figures proving popular in America, toy makers Gilbert decided to make its own action figures based on Solo and Kurakin. Both had a movable right arm to simulate aiming a gun and a cap firing a pistol. Along with the removable clothing, uncle pocket insignia and identification card. 
The likeness of Kuriakin is pretty good. While Solo looks like he spent too much time eating pies instead of beating spies. To ensure your figures were ready for any potential missions, Gilbert also made a series of accessories called TV Action Apparel, or accessories for TV action figures. Among the items available were an orange Uncle branded jumpsuit, cap firing Tommy gun, binoculars, sniper rifle, and even disguises. Perhaps one of the lesser known facts about the man from Uncle that inspired a spin off series called The Girl from Uncle. In fact, Ian Fleming originally came up with the concept of the TV show. He teamed Solo up with a female agent called April Dancer. However, April wasn't introduced until February 1966. During an episode called The Moon Glow Affair, the Girl from Uncle series then followed later in September, but despite the popularity of the original show and an appearance by Napoleon Solo, it failed to catch on and was cancelled after just one season. However, before it bit the dust, Marx produced an 11-inch doll action figure of April Dancer, complete with a number of different outfits and accessories. It's become a very rare toy to track down, and one currently listed on eBay with a buy it now price of $1,400. And even the accessories can sell for £100 without the doll included. So despite its failure to set the TV ratings world on light, the girl from Uncle has certainly had an impact on the world of toy collecting. So if you like that little look of Man from Uncle, uh, you might have learned something I did. I did. I'll admit, I really did. And I remember owning that husky Man from Uncle car, and I think I might actually go on eBay and see if I can get one, because it is pretty cool. So again, if you want to know the histories of any toy of any company, just let me know, I will talk about it. I love learning myself, and I hope you do too. So until the next video, thank you for watching. I'm going to toys be with you.